Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And And this this is the the Insider Insider Report. Report. So let your ears do the walking as we fill you in on what's going on in the Brookings Harbor area and beyond. Beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know, Cat. Hey, hey, how did your weekend go? The last week, I should say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last weekend of Love Letters just closed yesterday. And oh, right on. That's right. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and so much great feedback from the community coming Good. to see the shows. It was such a touching play. Like, people were coming up to the cast afterwards, and they, they were like, you made me sniffle a little bit at the end there with the touching part at the end. And it was so cute. And just, yeah, lots of people interested in seeing what's coming up next. And in March on the 1st, we've got our comedy night coming up. And then on uh, yeah. on the 8th, Vagina Monologues open. So we're just like going full tilt into spring with all the I mean, I'm grabbing your stuff on. and it's, I'm putting the paper together. Uh-huh. I was just talking about uh-huh. that. And your stuff is getting in there. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We all in March. I try to get my info in, you know. Yeah, you <laughs> I try to stay on top of those deadlines. I love people like you that actually send me this stuff. <laughs> oh, you know? I mean, yeah. it's like the paper's been around for 15 years and I still got it. Go hunting. Hey, you got Yeah, I go hunting. That's exactly <laughs> what I call it. Exactly. Go hunting. Yeah, it was, it was. So that's great. Good yeah. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the next one you, is the comedy night. going to be Comedy there. night. Yep. That one night thing. And then the play on the 8th. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's mm-hmm. very cool. So you get a couple weeks off at least. Uh, you Take kind of, either. yeah. Or at yeah. least to rehearse for yeah. her stuff, yeah. Get ready. <laughs> <Absolutely. for that. laughs> right on, mm-hmm. right on. Very cool, very yeah. cool. Uh, how about you and Junior? What were you up to? Oh, uh, we had a good weekend. Oh, they, they canceled the Daytona. It's going to be on Monday when we're taping here. Um, it'll be on today, later in the afternoon, because mm-hmm. Daytona, it got rained all over the place, I guess. So really? they couldn't race, yeah. yeah. So both of the races got nailed. So they didn't watch the race this weekend. Oh. Uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I, know. Mm-hmm. I just have my certain things. That I got my football. I got my racing. I like my bowling. Come yeah. on, man. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. But uh, no, so we just hung out and just had a good time. But I did. <clears throat> okay, you know, I've been talking about the band, the duo that I was trying to put together. Yeah, you've been mentioning that. Yeah. Called the Double Dose Duo. Mm-hmm. Music and Mayhem. Mm-hmm. Working for four years on the script and everything and finally getting around trying to get people... I needed a guy playing guitar and singing behind me, you know, somebody yeah. <laughs> playing guitar and singing behind me right. with me. And I found one. Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. Mike Powell. Promote him all the time. He plays all over. I, I hit him up. I just hit him up and his wife up and I go, hey, you know what? I don't know if you're interested or not, but here's what I'm putting together. And I want to mix some comedy with music and everything like that. And I got this whole script written out and everything I've yeah. been working on forever, you know, and everything. And I go, know anybody? If you're not interested, you know anybody? He hit me up and said, hey. Let's check it out. And so I went and talked to him last week. And so, Excellent. Yeah, so Tuesday of this week, it'll be our first rehearsal. So it'll be cool. I'm very excited about that. I'm looking forward to it. Yes. <laughs> and I can't wait because, you know, just like what I did with the Purple Days experience, mm-hmm. I got together with professionals, you know, the Spence brothers. Yeah. We were playing like three, four months after we got together. Mm-hmm. rehearsing because I knew my part they knew their part so we just put it together and we just all rocked on it you know real fast mm-hmm. so I'm hoping me and him are able to play I'm thinking the Bodacious Bazaars will be our uh, Your debut. debuts yeah, yeah kind of think yeah, yeah excellent. Uh, so that's cool mm-hmm. really exciting news on that part there because I've been working on this for a long time so I'm very happy and I dig it me and Mike hooking up together we had a nice little conversation me and his wife and it was it was a good thing so it was nice it was okay. very cool so yeah, so we had a good one. Hope everybody out there had a good time, too, and got out. And we'll get on with the show here, giving you a lot more of what's going on. But before we get going, I got to thank our sponsors. So I'd like to thank the Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaways, just the jeweler at Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. And if you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows at KCIW, all you got to do is go to kciw.org, and you will be on your merry way. And speaking of on your merry way, we got Mr. Bill Gursky from Beacon Broadband, the guru there. Uh, yeah, he's doing the internet report for us. That's what we've been, yeah, that's it right there. We get the fishing report, now we got the internet report. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing great, Bruce. Big, Chief fan, you guys big Chiefs fan over here, so, uh, you know. Yeah, I've been a Chiefs right fan most of my life, and uh, <laughs> I used to have season tickets. I lived in Kansas City <laughs> for quite a while, so I knew. I know I was up against you in a lot of ways, and I think most of the people in Oregon, I think, are either rooting for Seattle or San Francisco, and I think I met all the San Francisco people in two weeks. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, cool, but... Yeah, so things are going on here. So, uh, yeah, we got you on board. So questions we got to get here. I hear a lot of people are giving a thumbs up to Beacon Broadband. What is the scoop on all that going on right now? 
Well, so I know I, some of it. Yeah, yeah, I know you got it hooked up. As a matter of fact, we hooked up KCIW not too long ago, and and uh, everybody over here is really happy with it. With the Thumbs Up program, it started about eight or nine months ago, Bruce. And what we did is I sent out a campaign to people. We have about 2,400 customers now hooked up in the harbor and in Brookings and in Pistol River. And I'll talk a little bit about where we're heading shortly. But about eight months ago, I wanted to see what people felt about Beacon Broadband. So I sent out an email blast to everybody and said, please respond, why do you love Beacon Broadband? And we got about a 60% response back from everybody we sent something back to, and over 97% told us why they love Beacon Broadband. And then, so I'll go into that as I go into the next campaign. So about, oh, 30 days ago, I started another campaign that said, um, would you give a thumbs up to Beacon Broadband, and would you tell your neighbors, your friends, your acquaintances, people you work with, would you give a thumbs up to Beacon Broadband? And we sent that out to all 22,000 customers, and over 98% came back with two thumbs up and said, we, we really love it. And then we asked why. Why would you give a thumbs up to Beacon Broadband? The number one response was customer service, the fact that we're local. The number two response was is that th- we have a local office here and we're opening one in Gold Beach. So the local came into play again where our money is going to stay local, our jobs are staying local, and that was a big effect. Our competition, does ha- they don't have any local offices over here anymore, Bruce. The third one is our affiliation with Coos Curry Electric Cooperative, the fact that we are Coos Curry. They've been here for 85 years, trust and integrity. They love Coos Curry Electric, and they know we are them, so we know, they know we're going to take good care of them. And the last, they really do like the price for life, Bruce. They, um, oh, yeah. When they sign up for us and they're in that house and we give them all the equipments for free, the installations for free, they pay $55 for a 500 package and that's their price for the rest of their life. There's no gimmicks. Mm-hmm. There's no saying, hey, after 12 months, it's going to jack up the rates. We are local. We're part of your community. We don't want to play gimmicks and shenanigans. So it's 55 price for life. So we got back over 98.5%, a positive two thumbs up. The only 1.5% was people had some problems with some of our construction when we tore up driveways and stuff like that. Sure. But, but we've gone back and fixed them. That was another way to find out if we have a problem, Let's fix it. So they called us and said, hey, we got a little bit of a problem here. So we went out and fixed it. So we feel really proud of the fact that 98.5% of our 2,400 customers out there are giving Beacon Broadband a thumbs up. So pretty exciting time, Bruce. I mean, as we're heading north and um, it's, we think we're doing a great job out there, but we always want to hear from people. We love to have them stop in our office out here on the 101 and come in and tell us what you feel. Come and tell us why you love us. But it's exciting times to be in the internet business and to bring high-speed fiber internet to the southwest coast of Oregon. Right on, right on. Hey, well, you did touch on the Gold Beach thing. Uh, when will people living in Gold Beach be able to get Beacon Broadband? And what about the other towns? Uh, that's a great you question, know. Bruce. Yeah. And the, for, for, so for right it. now, we, we have service available to over 8,000 homes in Brookings, the Harbor, and Pistol River. So it's starting in March, we're going to start activating Pist- uh, uh, Gold Beach, excuse me. So what I'm doing Tuesday, Bruce, is about 2 o'clock on tomorrow, which is already Tuesday coming up on us. At 2 o'clock tomorrow and at 5.30 tomorrow, I have two separate crews of people coming from Gold Beach into the Gold Beach Library. I have 90 people coming in at 2 o'clock. And th- these are people that live in Gold Beach who want to hear about our services. And they responded back and said, if you had a Q&A session up there to teach us what's going on with Beacon, would you come come on over, have a sandwich, cookies, whatever? So 90 people have signed up for the 2 o'clock session, and then we have 79 people for the 5.30 session. We have free giveaways. So right now in Gold Beach, we'll start activating late March, April, and May, and June to the, the bottom half of Gold Beach. That's to downtown Gold Beach from Pistol River. And then from downtown Gold Beach all the way to the bridge, the Patterson Bridge, that'll be probably around May, June, May, June, and July. And then right after that, we head out to Geezer, Geezel and Ofer and get that done. And then sometime late fall, we'll be re- up to finalizing Port Orford, and that'll close us out this year. So we'll have service available in, all the way from Port Orford to the California border by the end of the year, which will be about 
13,000 homes and businesses. Right on. Well, there you go. There you go. And very cool. Well, it's always cool to have you come on with the internet report and understand that you also did another show yesterday. Now, what show is that with Amanda? It was with Amanda Whittemore, and it was talking about our lives and how we experience okay. real life stuff. And it was very really interesting. We talked a lot about her life and my life and how I came here about a year and a half ago. And what we, what the go, I mean, what uh, Brookings has meant to myself and my wife, oh, okay. and why we love living here. So uh, tune into that show when you get a chance, Bruce, and listen to us. What's the show? Do you know the name of the show? I don't oh, remember the name it's of the quality show. Quality Living. Quality, quality living. living. There you go, with Amanda. Okay. Yep, it's on the regular go. rotation here. I oh, try to experience it every day, but I couldn't remember the name of it. So if you want to know the man behind Beacon, just tune into that show. Quality Living. That's right. Cool. Well, thanks, Bruce. Well, thank you much for coming on board. Bye. All right. Always a good time with the Internet Report there. Yeah, Beacon, man. They're really they're t- taking this place over by storm. And so that's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. No, like getting all the way up the up to the North County there. That's really exciting. That's yeah, a lot of growth it, for them. It is, yeah. Absolutely. And I like the fact that they repair what they tear up. That's that always good. is Come always back very lovely. Like well. Sorry, you got the Internet. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, let us get on going here with the music schedule. Can you take us away? <laughs> oh, yeah. So at Misty Mountain Brewing, music there runs from 6 to 8 p.m. And on the 23rd, P.A. and T-Roy are going to be playing. That's right. We're a little sound slow here because it's like we're still getting ready for the. I'm getting all that together this week, the new music. So we'll have more. But Cisco and Daltrey, Cisco Solo will be playing on the 24th to Brigades Harbor. Farmer's Market from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then Mr. Lon Goddard is going to be playing on the 21st at Coon Time. Music there runs from 6 to 8 p.m. Yeah, and as we said, P.A. and T. Roy will be at Misty Mountain on the 23rd, 6 to 8. And then down at the Inateca in Crescent City on the 24th, the Shark Tones are playing from 8 to 10. Yeah, and the Italian guys will be on the 23rd at Coon Time, 6 p.m. And then Danielle, Duran, and Ohana on Tuesdays have an open mic at Oxen Free running from 8 to 11 and then on Thursdays, they're at Checo Brewing for an open mic from 5 to 8. Yeah, and Elk Valley Casino's got a couple things going on at the Betty Green Center on the 24th. They've got the Unchained, a tribute to Van Halen. Doors open at 7 p.m. and shows at 8. And in the Warriors Bar and Grill on the 23rd and 24th, they're out Steve Nelson. He'll be playing from 7 to 10. And then the Shark Tones once again are playing on the 24th at Inateca. Again, down in Crescent City, the music there runs from 8 to 10 p.m. Yeah, that's it on the yeah. music right this time around. So <laughs> You know, it's sometimes we're just efficient about that. That's hey, right. Getting into some events here. The Brookings Harbor High School Drama Class is currently presenting The Internet is Distracted. Oh, look, a kitten by <laughs> Ian McWethy. Come watch as Micah battles the Internet as it tries to distract her from the world. She only has 45 minutes to finish her paper on The Great Gatsby. She just needs to check a few facts on the internet first. Unfortunately, the web is a nefariously wacky place where boxing cats, Russian spies, and competitive streaming services threaten to take over Micah's schoolwork or worse. This production runs one more weekend. It's going to happen on February 23rd and 24th. That's at the Brookings Harbor High School Auditorium. The showtime's Friday at 7 p.m., and then Saturday, they have two shows, one at 2 o'clock and one at 7. No show on Sunday. Tickets are available for pre-sale at the BHHS office. It's $12 for adults, $10 for students. Yeah, I like that. Saturday at 2 p.m. You know, the matinee there on Saturday. Mm-hmm, pretty- mm-hmm. Hey, the Curry Public Library District on 3rd Street in Gold Beach, they're 94341 3rd Street in Gold Beach, has a few more February events going on. They got Design Your Dragon happening on the 24th from 10 a.m. to noon. Explore the process of designing and printing an articulated 3D dragon. Follow-up sessions to create your own dragon will be available. You can RSVP that one at www.currypubliclibrary.org slash events slash design your dragon. This is ages teen and adult. And then we got set your phone for easy use happening on the 27th from noon to 1. Learn how to Use accessibility features to make your phone easier. This program will cover how to control your phone with your voice, have your phone read the screen to you, adjust text size and appearance, screen magnification, and more. And then Curious Beasts of the Southern Oregon Coast will be going on the 29th at 5.30 p.m. Join marine biologist Nancy Treneman of the Oregon Institute of Marine Biology for a free talk on the creatures that dwell in our local waters. The public is invited to join them for an investigation into the hidden lives of some of Oregon Coast's most interesting marine creatures. 
There is a treasure trove of obscure, beautiful organisms living alongside some of the better-known icons that have a lot to teach us. We will learn about crab-to-crab relationships, sea cucumber predator escape tactics, brittle star feeding techniques, and more. Way well, hey, sounds good. All right. And hey, now it's time for quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. Hey, yeah, this week we got a few quotes from English naturalist Charles Darwin. He was born on February 12th, 1809. He says, a man who dares to waste one hour of time has not discovered the value of life. Scientific man ought to have no wishes, no affections, a mere heart of stone. We must, however, acknowledge, as it seems to me, that man, with all his noble qualities, still bears in his bodily frame the indelible stamp of his lowly origin. And last but not least, an American monkey, after getting drunk on brandy, would never touch it again, and thus is much wiser than most men. (laughs) Hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from Charles Darwin with Cousin Bruce. Until next week. Have a great one. That's hey. right. Very right. clever. <laughs> hey, the Tortuga Mexican Restaurant, located at 28788 Hunter Creek Loop in Gold Beach, is presenting solo acoustic rock artist Ghost of Brian Craig. Brian graces the stage, armed only with his acoustic guitar and harmonica. This is happening on the 23rd from 6 to 8. They highly recommend reservations. You can do that by calling 541 701 9502. That's right. Very cool. And the Chetco Pelican Players, located at 1240 Chetco Avenue and Brickings, are presenting Death Takes a Holiday. This is directed by Christina Rushton, an assistant directed by Stephen Rushton. So there you go. In the early 1930s, Italy as death. The loneliest of souls suspends his usual business to explore the mysteries of mortality, hoping to learn why it is men fear him. Posing as handsome Prince Cirque, he arrives at Duke Lambert's Italian villa to spend time with the Duke and his guests, and for the first time glimpses the joys and heartbreaks of mortal life. Although attracted to the mysterious prince, the guests shy away from him, sensing his true nature. But Gracia, the beautiful young woman who the Duke thought was to marry his son, falls for the handsome stranger. Will her love prevail over death? This is happening on February 23rd through March 3rd. Fridays and Saturdays, 7.30 p.m. And Sundays, they have the 2 p.m. matinee. Tickets are $15 for adults, $7 for students. And there are three ways to get them. You can visit checkcopp.booktix.com. You can call 541-469-1857. Or you can buy tickets at the door. Door opens 45 minutes before the start of each performance. Elk Valley Casino is presenting Unchained, a Van Halen tribute at the Betty Green Center. This is on the 24th of February at 8 p.m. The concert will feature some of Van Halen's greatest hits, including Running with the Devil, Ain't Talking About Love, Dance the Night Away, Panama, Jump, Hot for Teacher, The Cradle Will Rock, Eruption, and many more. Tickets are currently on sale at etix.com and at the casino. Doors open at 7 p.m. The show starts at 8 p.m., And because this is a casino event, you must be 21 or older to attend. You do. Hey, there you go. And Brookings Seventh-day Adventist Church, located at 102 Park Avenue in Brookings, is presenting the Chicago Piano Quartet. This is happening on the 25th at 3 p.m. The Partnership for the Performing Arts will host the Chicago Piano Quartet in Brookings. This group is an exciting new project that brings together four of its namesake city's most esteemed chamber players. All right. And then there's a Let's Dance series of events happening on Sunday, the 25th. Bolero lessons happen from 1 to 2 p.m. Open dance from 2 to 3. Dance music features ballroom Latin and swing. And the lessons are done by Carol and Amy. This is happening at the Checo Grange, and they say that they have a $7 suggested donation. The event is absolutely free, though, for teens. There you go. And B.H. Carden Club is presenting the first annual Scion Day in Grafting Demonstrations. It's getting closer, folks. Presented by John Savage. This is at the Chetco Community Library, and it's happening on the 26th from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. This is open to the public from beginner to experience. All are welcome. Don't have Scions? Well, come see what they are starting anyways. Come learn about grafting, and please participate by bringing Scions of healthy fruit trees such as apple, pear, or cherry, any fruit tree. Bring gallon Ziploc bags, a tape, and a permanent marker. And then they say, please contact John if you need to know how to harvest your science to bring to the class. He will instruct you via email. 
And you can just email him at John Sav, S-A-V, at charter.net. Sharpen up your grafting night and create your own Franken tree. Yeah, Franken tree. <laughs> All right. Now it's time for a bit of weird history with Bushwhacker Bruce. Right. G'day, cat. G'day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's Bit of Weird History for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know that a Roman legion ended up as mercenaries in China? It's true. Here's the story. The legend begins in 53 BC with the Battle of Curac between the Roman general Marcus Licinius Crassus and the Parthenian general Serena. Carhe is a location near the modern day Syrian Turkish border. In antiquity, Crassus was already one of the wealthiest men in the Roman Republic, but he had a desire to the wealth of Parthia, so he convinced the Senate to let him lead 42,000 Roman soldiers into the battlefields against the Parthians. In the battle, Crassus and his army suffered a humiliating defeat at the hand of Serena and his 10,000 archers. Crassus attempted to negotiate a truce, but was killed in the process. And according to legend, liquid gold was poured down his throat as punishment for his greed. Hmm. Of the surviving Roman soldiers, 10,000 of them were captured alive by the Parthians. According to some accounts, they were relocated to eastern border of the Parthian Empire. Well, it was a Parthian custom to send prisoners of war captured in the west to the far east to secure their loyalty against their eastern rivals, the Huns. Well, 17 years later, in 36 BC, on the western border of the Han Chinese Empire, the Battle of Zizi was fought between the Chinese and the Huns. Well, the Chinese annals record mercenaries fighting on the side of the Huns who used fish scale formation. Well, fish scale formation impressed the Chinese and they invited the soldiers to come back to China and become part of the border guard in the modern Gansu province. A city and a county were also made for them, which were remade Lijian or Legion. The Chinese description of the fish scale formation used by the new mercenary soldiers bears a vague resemblance to the testudo formation practiced by Roman legions. This has led to the popular theory that these mysterious soldiers were in fact exiled Roman legionnaires from the Battle of Carhe, who had hired themselves out as mercenaries for the Huns. I hope you enjoyed this week's Bit of History with yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, keep it real, but always keep it weird. Yeah, they just kind of relocated and yeah. fit right on in with him. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, it's like, hey, these guys like are fighting. You know, they're fighting like the Romans fight. <laughs> Pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that linguistic story. tie-in, too. You know, sometimes our word origins, like leisure, just come from different well, well, that's why I said places. that. Yeah, 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 they actually named the place, oh, I which love, is Legion. I love linguistic history. Yeah, yeah no, thanks, for, cool. thanks for including that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, guess what? Three Penny Theatre hey. Co. is currently <laughs> going to be presenting a comedy night at the Ox. This is happening on the 1st of March from 8 to 10 p.m. Join them for a stand-up comedy free-for-all at Oxen Free Public House. This is going to be featuring sets by Chloe Rosenthal and Brandy Lara, with a headliner set by Evan Vest, with additional short sets by more than half a dozen up-and-coming comics from Curry and Del Norte counties. This event is all about celebrating locally born and locally based up-and-coming comedians. There is no cover charge for this event, but hey, tipping your bartenders and comics is highly recommended. Right on, right on. Well, maybe if you do that again next year or whatever, we'll be ready for that. Have some fun, do our little musical little, 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 comedy. Yeah, do our little musical comedies. Get, get there. That's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, I'll pass that along to Jason. He'll talk to you. Yeah, right, cool. yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say when we're ready, it'll be like that. It'll be fun. Excellent. Hey, we got a 2024 Travel Southern Oregon Coast Network conference coming to town here on February 26th and 27th at the Salmon Run Golf Course. The TSOC Network Idea Exchange will bring regional tourism partners together to learn, build relationships, and find solutions to the challenges we face as an industry. Travel Southern Oregon Coast is thrilled to have you join them for the highly anticipated second annual network conference in Brookings at the beautiful Salmon Run Golf Course. The keynote speaker this year will be Marie Smith, the queen of Facebook and social media marketing. They look forward to seeing the tourism-related businesses, organizations, frontline staff, and leaders from the Southern Oregon Coast region. They'll be hosting an exciting opening network reception on Monday evening, February 26, followed by a full day of valuable insights, networking opportunities, and collaborative sessions on Tuesday, February 27th. 
So they say register today. For more details, we'll be sent to you via email as they approach the dates of the event. You go www.oscrtn.com slash T-S-O-C dash network dash conference there. Right there. All right. We've got some time for some PSAs here, starting with Curry Public Library located in Gold Beach. They're presenting Memory Cafe Curry. Memory Cafe Curry will meet the third Wednesday of every month from 1030 a.m. to noon. That's at the Curry Public Library in Gold Beach. To register for this program, they ask that you email memorycafe at cplib.net or give them a call at 541 541- Two four seven seven two four six. A memory cafe is an informal social gathering for older adults living with memory loss and their care partners. Care partners may include, but aren't limited to, spouses, siblings, children, or friends whose social lives are often just as affected as their loved ones. Memory cafes are designed to be casual, stress-free gatherings to allow care partners the opportunity to relax and socialize with others in a s- similar situation. Memory Cafe Curry will be staffed by a qualified social service provider, library staff, and volunteers. Yeah, we got time for one more here. Hey, the VFW Legacy Bricks fundraiser is going on. The VFW Post is raising money to fix its building, upgrade its heating, electricity, and improve its landscape. They've raised approximately 30000 but they need another 20000 to complete the work. They are selling legacy bricks that will highlight the entrance of the building, featuring messages of memory to veterans respected by their loved ones. Each brick will cost the donor $100, and every purchased brick will be laid professionally in front of the post for everyone to observe. They will also conduct more yard sales, provide meals for a nominal donation, and sponsor other groups and their activities. Once the building is completed, the VFW Post 966 will serve the veterans and community of Brookings. They are active in the Brookings community as a member of the Brookings Chamber of Commerce and supporter of the Brookings City Council. They support our veterans by providing ceremonies, funerals, and memorials, the VFW Post 966 is a 501c19 and nonprofit group with all members being veterans of foreign wars. Their national charter began in 1939, and they have approximately 20 million members throughout the United States. Veterans Post 966, located at 507 Pacific Avenue in Brookends. So there you go. We got to the end. We got the flying fickle finger of fate there. And uh, so it's time to close out the show. Before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to our fearless producer, Brother Tom, for all his great work making us look and sound good on the radio. I want to thank you all for tuning in to this week's Insider Report. And make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows they have to offer. And you can catch all the fantastic show podcasts, including the Insider Report, by going to KCIW.org. And while you're there, check out the live streaming as well. Until next week, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And we are signing off, so keep it real and spread the love and the peace every chance you get. And hey, we'll We'll see see you out out there. Bam! Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.